Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the Spiritism Talk Series promoted by the United States Spiritist Federation every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I am very happy to host this talk by Claudio Filio, who will be leading our live today with the theme, No Judging. Before we start, please allow me to introduce Claudio. Claudio Filio is a dad of two, a technology enthusiast, and has been studying spiritism since 2010. He is an active member of the California Spiritist Association and the No Solar Spiritist Society. Hi, Claudio. How are you doing? Hi, Peter. How's it going? Good, good. Great to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. Excited sure. to talk about uh, our, our in our presentation today. Great. So everybody, please take this opportunity while Claudio speaks to send your questions during his presentation. He has reserved time to address your comments and your questions once he concludes his presentation. So, Claudio, it's all yours. All right, thank you so much, Peter. Thank you everyone for watching us uh, this morning. Thank you for the U.S. Uh, Spiritist Federation uh, to allow me to present to you guys uh, this morning. And the theme for our, 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 our talk today is really why we judge others. Have you guys uh, really thought about this question before? And judging happens every day. And no matter where you are, it, sometimes at work, sometimes at school, at home with your family, uh, with your friends, whenever they do something that you don't like, or, uh, or in most of the time with people that you don't know, like sometimes you're just walking on the street and you see someone that is different than what you're used to, and then you start judging them, either for their actions, for the way they wear uh, themselves, for whatever reason, we tend to judge others. And it's a very automatic reaction. It's part of like being human, but we thinking about like our, 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 our progression and, and in our in our journey to become better it is something that we have to control and we have to put our mind in front of it and stop that cycle of judging right so uh i'm gonna bring you guys a couple of like different reasons why we judge so much others and hopefully uh, and then by the end uh, we're gonna go over how we can overcome that right so the first reason uh, why we, we typically judge others is due to prejudice. Uh, prejudice, uh, and I, I went to the dictionary here, it's a preconceived opinion that's not necessarily based on reason or actual experience. Sometimes it can be based on an actual experience that we experience ourselves, or maybe someone that was close to us experienced a, a, cer a certain situation with a person that has a similar background to the person that you're judging at a very moment. And so we come with this biased opinion from like one particular event. And then, you know, we, we, we start judging that per the person. We, we come with this preconceived opinion, but we've got to remember our data set is too small to put, you know, uh, a whole bunch of people from whatever reason it could be uh, from, like a different country than yours or from a different religion background or whatever reason, our data set is really too small to put everyone in the same bucket. Uh, the other reason why we, uh, we have prejudice against other people. And I, I'm saying we, because even though a lot of, a lot of us might not consider ourselves racist or, or, or things like that, which, which is great. We still have that inside of us. So we have to combat that. So, Another reason is really competition for resources. So especially uh, when it comes to situations uh, that are critical, when uh, resources become uh, critical, and we, we just experienced that uh, throughout the pandemic, that instant kind of kicks in and we start like, and, and that starts to boil inside of you, right? Uh, there's also a historic system of oppression that leads us into the situation of prejudice. And, and that starts sometimes like, with your uh, uh, great parents uh, or maybe your parents, right? So they have that pre preconception and you pass that along through generations. So 
it's important, uh, especially if you have kids, to break that cycle. We have to uh, make sure our kids don't come with those biases that were passed on to us uh, moving forward, right? And, and then another reason uh, for prejudice itself, it's unfamiliarity. So whenever there's something that we're not familiar with, we tend to fear that or we tend to repel that. And uh, I'll give you guys uh, another example, something that happened to me as a kid. Uh, so when I was a kid, my mom used to cook a lot for us and she's a phenomenal cook. There was something that she used to cook that I didn't really like. Uh, which was uh, pasta in general, uh, except for her, her lasagna. I always liked her lasagna, but her pasta, like she she cooked it too much. So it was kind of soggy, kind of soft, and she didn't like too much sauce in it. So it was, it was a pasta that didn't have a whole lot of sauce. And me as an adult, I like pasta al dente and I like a lot of sauce, right? So as a kid, I grew up with this preconception that I didn't like pasta, but the reality was I didn't like my mom's pasta. And then everywhere I would go, I would say, no, no, I don't like pasta. And then until I got to a point that I realized, oh my God, I'm missing out so much. Let me try. And then when I obviously, I started trying pasta and then nowadays I love it and I cook a lot of pasta myself, but things like that, those uh, past experiences uh, that we had, cannot get into uh, our way of uh, progressing and moving forward. So we always have to watch when, when you have like this feeling of uh, repelling something, just watch that and, and see if there's anything behind it, right? So don't let that block your progress or don't let that uh, close yourself to other situations, right? So uh, th- th- this was one of the uh, first factors. Now I'm gonna bring uh, something that Jesus brought to us uh, when uh, he gave the Sermon of the Mountain. And this is described on the Gospel of Matthew and the, the Gospel by, uh, the, by the Spiritist Gospel also covers that in length. But basically, uh, the discourse was very, fairly brief and he starts uh, by warning his followers that the danger, uh, dangers of judging others. And Basically, just to resume what is written here, he says, why do you see a speck in your neighbor's eye, but you you don't see the log in your own eye? And I I found this picture here, uh, which you can actually see in the Met Museum. It's the parable of the modern being uh, by Domenico Fetti uh, from uh, 1619. As you can see there, uh, this older gentleman is pointing to, to to the younger gentleman, and he has this huge log right in front of him. So sometimes uh, we tend to see the failures of others more than we see our own failures. And uh, the other thing that uh, Jesus said during uh, that time was that for the judgment you make, you'll be judged. The measure you give will be the measure you get. So we, we have to keep that in mind when uh, judging others, are we up to that standard to be able to judge someone? Are we really better than that person? And so it's it's much, much easier to judge that person up front than look into ourselves and see if we are in a different situation than that person is. So we have to always watch out uh, for for those feelings and make sure also like when you do that judgment, make sure like that judgment how, how would that be if it would apply to you instead of the other person? So let's always keep that in mind. The third reason why we tend to judge others is because we see our own actions on other people. Uh, especially being a spiritist, we sometimes see ourselves in the past, things that we used to do, uh, not necessarily in a past life, but even in this life sometimes, you see people uh, doing something wrong and and then something that you used to do and that bothers you so much. And it's natural to feel like that, but we just have to remember that person is also progressing and that person can become some someone like you. So if you're truly working on yourself, you should not uh, 
really condemn that person and just think, oh, he's also growing. He's also like, I used to do that. Now I don't do it anymore. So look as an opportunity to congratulate yourself that you don't do that anymore. Right. So just take a different turn on, on when you're judging someone. Uh, and like I mentioned on the previous slide, a judging is easier than understanding. So uh, I also have this experience that I never forgot. I was very young. Uh, I was probably like 19 or 20 years old. And I was traveling with my friends. And we're in the middle of this huge traffic, bumper to bumper. It was, it was in the summer, very hot. And five kids in the car. And I had this friend, Ricky, and he was one of the calmest persons I ever met. And as he, he was driving very safely for, especially being uh, 18 or 19 years old, he was driving very safely. And then people were cutting him off left and right. And we in the car, we were like, Ricky, come on, man. Everybody's cutting you off. And, and then he, he was just calm and laughing. And to the point that he said, you know, you never know what's going on with those people. Maybe they are in a rush. Maybe they are taking someone to the hospital. Maybe they are, they have their reasons to be doing what they're doing. We have no reason to be in a rush. We're just going on vacation. We have nothing scheduled. So why you guys are so in such a hurry, right? So he basically took a bad situation and changed completely the perspective of it which is something that we should do. And I, I always remember, and every time I, I'm in the situation, especially in the traffic, I live here in the Bay Area, traffic tend to be very bad. I always think about that. I remember that because that helps me to calm myself down and just go through that situation. So keep that in mind. We, you know, we have sometimes to look into situations and create an opportunity to, to, take, uh, uh, to, to think a little deeper. Uh, there might be a reason why somebody's cutting you off. There might be a reason why maybe somebody's yelling at you. There might be something going on in their lives that you're not aware of. And um, just be more patient with people. And and now it comes another, uh, another reason, uh, which is, you know, how many times we underestimate someone because we fail to be curious. And when I say that, this is a phrase from Walt uh, Whitman, uh, and it's also covered on the show Ted Lasso. Uh, I, I would recommend you guys watch that show. It's a phenomenal show. And basically, in a lot of the situations, we fail to ask questions. So we, we, we use those assumptions that we have about a, a person, maybe because of their background, maybe because the way they dress, and, and then we... We, we fail to be curious. So I remember a situation as well. Uh, I was visiting a customer in San Francisco. It was a startup. And and then comes in this guy. He was uh, wearing a hat uh, flipped to the back. He was just wearing some uh, skate sneakers. So he, he was not dressing as I would expect. Uh, and we are in this meeting. It was the first time I'm, I'm meeting with those uh, with that particular customer. And turns out at the end, that guy was the CEO of the company. And he was one of the brightest guys I ever met. But he was dressing completely unfamiliar to what I would expect. Then I, I look him up on LinkedIn and this guy had a PhD at Stanford. He, I mean, he has had several companies before he, uh, he got into that particular company that we were visiting. So that misconception that I had led me to a completely wrong expectation of what that guy was. And he basically just surprised me very positively. So, you know, things like that happen because we fail to be curious. I could just, and then, and then later on in different occasions, he started telling me he likes skating and he likes to collect uh, Jordans and things like that. So we started like talking. So that curiosity came to me after obviously, and then the guy's a great guy, except like the fact that he was brilliant. He's also like a very nice guy, loves similar things that I do. And um, it was a very pleasant uh, situation that I, that I just went through there. Uh, and, and also when, when that happens to you as well, um, 
you know, if somebody criticizes you, see the positive side of it. Uh, we're going to cover this in a little bit, but, you know, when whenever people criticize uh, us, we tend to be more like on the, on the defensive side of it, right? So we tend to be uh, very protective. Uh, we tend to be uh, very dismissive sometimes, or we tend to say, oh, this person is trying to hurt me. Uh, and most times, uh, if someone really cares about you, they will tell you the truths that you need to hear. Uh, and that, that happens in all kinds of relationships. So especially at home, uh, if you have a significant other, that person is usually the most well-equipped person to tell you the truth. And if you're not open to it, you you know, you know end up failing in your marriage uh, when you're, or, or whatever type of relationship you are. So listening to the to the people that are close to you, it's important, right? So just be open to it and not be defensive because everyone has something good to offer. So don't let a lot of those things that we mentioned so far get in the way to see the good side of people. Okay, so let's move to the last point that I want to make on the reasons. Uh, so pride. Uh, Pride induces us to disguise our faults, even from ourselves. So uh, it makes us hide those flaws. Uh, so it's like like I mentioned before, we it's easier for us to see flaws of other people than ourselves, right? And and the our actions are often driven by pride. Uh, even if you don't consider yourself like a, a proud person of yourself, uh, we. We tend to always put ourselves first. So we have to always watch uh, for that because if we are here living with other people, our, our main goal is really to grow as a human being, right? And in order to grow as a human being, humility is one of the things that we have to practice every day. So, and sometimes it's very hard, but uh, it is something that we, we have to work on. And if you read, uh, Kardec's work in many different books, uh, he basically says pride is the negation of uh, many virtues and it, it bases uh, most of the human uh, actions. And he also states pride as the main uh, obstacle for progression. So uh, I took uh, one part, or you, or you can go read uh, one particular section of the Spirit's book, and it's covered uh, on the uh, chapter Law of Progress, I believe it's uh, the third book of the Spirit's book, question 785. And it say, like the question is, what is the greatest obstacle to progress? And it says pride and selfishness. And as you, as you read more about Spiritism, you understand that's truly what uh, makes us take the, the worst decisions in our existing life and also in, in our, our past lives. Uh, this particular chapter uh, discusses how our experiences across lifetimes can be shaped by our past tendencies toward pride, right? And and then how uh, learning to embrace humility is necessary for true moral advancement. So, you know, pride and the ego, which are very well connected, are the main reason for us to... Uh, to move forward and even like a lot of people say oh i i don't you know i don't need help of anyone and maybe today uh one can be in good health can be in a good economical situation you never know right so yeah maybe today you don't need help of someone but if you keep your pride it's going to get you a point in your life that maybe you're not going to be in the same financial situation that you are right now, or maybe you're not going to be in the same health situation that you are right now. We don't know what comes next. Uh, and and our, our spirit, we, we, we set that, like we, we defined that plan before we came in here to go through this existence, but uh, we don't know what, what, what's going to come next. So we have to be prepared and work in your humility when you're not in a situation that you're going to be forced to uh, because, you know, I can give an example. I know some people that are uh, getting older to a point that they might not be able to drive anymore. And that that's a huge uh, impact on your 
on your pride, right? So the moment that you you you're not capable of doing or that you depend on others to do things that you used to do, uh, it, it gets very frustrating. Or even uh, that happened to me uh, just recently. If you, if you have an injury of some sort, then you know some basic things that you used to do you're not going to be able to do anymore and there's a lot of like bad feelings that come with it so if we practice our humility every day when those situations arise you're going to be prepared right so and well so we covered uh a lot of the reasons why we judge so much others right so let's move uh, in now into what can we do to be less judgmental or, or what tools can we use in order to be less judgmental ag against other people? So the first one comes from one of the sages of uh, antiquity, uh, Socrates, uh, which you know lived on earth uh, more than 400 years before Christ was among us. And he says, know thyself, right? So knowing yourself and understanding what are our faults uh, is key for you to stop judging others because before you judge anyone else, you should judge yourself, judge your actions, understand if uh, what you're doing, uh, what is the impact of what you say, what is the impact of what you do in others, uh, especially if you are a parent you have to watch out all your actions because the little ones are paying attention and they know exactly uh, like what you're doing. Because sometimes you tell your kids not to do something, but if you do it, then it's pointless, right? So we need to watch for your actions. And before I became a parent, I always studied that, but now they will pick it up like the smaller details and they will throw it back to you. So, which is good, but so you have to watch out if you're, if you're a parent and, and really work on yourself, work, um, break that cycle in, in, in a lot of different ways, your biases, be more open to different people, different situations. Uh, because like, like, like I mentioned on the previous slide, spiritism emphasizes humility as the key virtue in overcoming that negative pride, right? Uh, and, and also recognizing his one limitations. So for instance, I'm, I'm a big guy and I know like if I want to, if I want to be uh, a marathon uh, runner, I'm probably going to fail. So I, you know, it's better to put my effort on something that I can be good at. And that's even as a leader uh, in, in my work, uh, something I have learned through like different courses is really when you're leading people, you want to focus in what they're good at, not what they're bad at. So instead of like trying to fix some of the things that they are bad, let's focus on exploiting what they're good at. So sometimes if you're, and I'm not saying we shouldn't fix some of the, the problems that we have, we definitely should, but we just shouldn't just focus our life in fixing all the wrongs because it's going to be very frustrating. So we should lead our life with what we are good at or what, really pleasures us to to become better people right so that's uh that that's one of the the, the key things i, I want to pass down to you guys and uh here's another definition uh that really speaks to my heart here and this is uh how hatred was defined by mlk so uh he delivered uh this address at uh Cornell College in Iowa, and it was not worthy uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, perhaps uh, chief among them was the uh, exposition of a tragic condition that continues to tear our society today. And as he remarked here, I I'm just going to read this slide for you guys. He says, I'm convinced that men hate each other because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. And they don't know each other because they don't communicate with each other. And they don't communicate with each other because they're separated from each other. So keep that in mind. Uh, we usually fear what we don't know. And instead of like increasing that fear, 
why don't we are curious about going there and learning more about that particular topic? Um, I can give you guys an example. Uh, I, I personally love learning about um, uh, languages and, and also religions. It is something that I like. And I remember when uh, I had the opportunity to go to New York, uh, I went to the uh, Museum of Natural uh, History. Uh, and then I remember checking the section for all the religions. There's so much knowledge in there. And, you know, you can go and learn about the Muslim religion or you can learn about so many different religions, religions that come from Africa, religions that come from everywhere. So instead of like fearing certain things, go ahead and learn them. Uh, same thing, we have something right now that everybody talk about, which is AI and everybody's just fearing AI, right? So instead of like fearing, go learn what AI really is, which can also be called machine learning. So it, it is something that can help us to progress tremendously. So instead of like fearing it, go learn it, go study about it. Um, because if we, if we don't do that, especially with people, uh, if you, if you feel like you don't like a certain culture or how people act, go learn about that society, about that culture. Uh, it will open your mind instead of like just creating this negative reaction on yourself. Um, all right, let's move into, uh, another tip from, and this comes on the spirits book. A question uh, 919 from St. Augustine. And this is an exercise I recommend anyone uh, doing every day. And he says, basically, at the end of each day, I would assess my conscience, review everything that I have done. And I would ask myself whether I had failed in some duty, whether some someone might have reason to complain of me. So if we do that exercise every day before we go to bed, uh, it's a good way for you to review your actions on that day. And if you do this every day, you, you start noticing, um, you, first of all, you start feeling good because if you did something good that day or if you helped someone that day, at the end of the day, you're going to have a very uh, pleasant uh, sensation. So you you will feel accomplished for that day because you did something good to help others or maybe you did something good for yourself, like that day you worked out a little harder, you you didn't eat what we were supposed to uh, not eat, or uh, you spent a lot of time with your kids and that memory, that memory of, uh, of something that happened early in the day gives you a lot of joy. And also, if you did something wrong, uh, somehow that pops up in that, especially if you're like, I usually do that when I lay down and I just close my eyes, that comes back. So the next day you have the chance to change that. So, and make sure you do. Like if you if you did something that maybe hurt someone, go back to that person and give your reasons why you act that way, right? Like uh, give your reasons why uh, you, you did what you do, uh, you, you did what you did uh, to the other person, uh, make amendments. So it's it's a great way for you to evaluate yourself and really uh, become a better person. Uh, and here comes another tip from St. Augustine, same question. And he, uh, the uh, Kardec asked, asked the, the spirits, which the answer was St. Augustine, well, uh, how is the most effective method for guaranteeing uh, self-improvement? And it comes back to uh, something I, I have uh, mentioned before, so when you are in doubt uh, about uh, regarding uh, any one of your own actions, ask yourself what judgment would be if you are done uh, by another. So when you're doing something to someone, put yourself in their shoes and try to understand or try to think how would you feel if someone was doing that to you? And, and this comes from uh, something called the golden rule. Uh, which is the principle of treating others the way you want uh, to be treated. And it's a maxim uh, that is found in not only on the spiritism, uh, Jesus uses the golden rule all the time, but in most religions and different cultures. Uh, and it can com be considered uh, an ethic uh, of uh, uh, reciprocity in, uh, in some religions. 
So, uh, and basically, based on that situation, uh, when you when you put yourself in somebody else's shoes, and you wouldn't like that, don't do that to that person, right? So, uh, we really need to be put your, ourselves uh, in other people's shoes to to feel what they feel. And coming back to another point that I I brought earlier, uh, which is something uh, that leadership courses taught me as well, which is our loving critics. So again, uh, do not overlook the opinion of enemies because they have no interest in this uh, guys in the truth. And uh, God often places them in your life to serve as a mirror, to warn you more frankly than a friend would do, right? We have to stop being defensive. Uh, when someone uh, makes a comment, I, I actually really appreciate, especially like in my work life, when someone comes to me and gives me some feedback on, for whatever reason, um, I, my first reaction is not to be defensive, it's to actually be thankful because uh, only people that care about you will, will give you feedback. And, and the, the other comment I wanna make is take that feedback if it's coming from someone that you trust, or even if it's an enemy, like sometimes you feel like they're trying to hurt you, right? Uh, so take that with a grain of salt. But at the same time, there's always a little bit of truth in, in everything. Even when someone is just trying to hurt you, there might be a reason why they're acting that way. Uh, so your first reaction should be like really to repel that. But, uh, you know, even like I said, when when you feel someone is trying to hurt you, uh you, you want to thank them for the feedback and you can basically either ignore it or try to take any good pieces of it uh, because at the end of the day the opinion that really matter is the opinion that you have about yourself and the opinion of the ones that you truly care about uh, are, are are the ones that care uh, if someone is just trying to hurt you uh, you can also feel pity for them because maybe, you know, uh, they're in a different stage of evolution. So uh, uh, the other recommendation is wh whenever that happens to you, treat that person with even more kindness. Because when you're kind to others, it's going to be very hard for them to not be kind back to you. So even if that happens every day, kindness will make that person a little bit more round. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you notice they will change the way they react to you. And another thing that comes from Kardec on the Spirits book, question 798, are that changes and ideas are only transformed in the long run. So that concept uh, of racism that I, that I brought to you guys, that comes in several generations, right? Sometimes you have to break that cycle. Uh, and as you break that cycle, then those ideas, at least if you have kids or if you have family around you, they're not going to move forward within your, your, your own cycle uh, moving forward. Uh, so those, those ideas become weakened in the course of uh, successive generations. And then finally, they disappear. So uh, this is something that uh, Kardec taught me. and. I, I, I try to, anytime I pay attention to this, so going back to the exercise that St. Augustine was teaching us about every night to, to do a self-reflection of your day, it's a good way, it's a good tool for you to, to assess and, and see those things. And uh, if there are some ideas that are brewing in your head, you want to cut them off as soon as possible because you don't want them to propagate, right? And... Uh, I'm getting into uh, my later, uh, my my last slide here, which is really the transformation starts with the man in the mirror, like referencing Michael Jackson here. But it's it's really true. Like we, the first one that we need to work on is really on ourselves, and our goal here to be here and is really to improve ourselves, to become better human beings. So spiritism. It's just another tool in your toolbox that will help you to uh, move along in this journey. So I hope you guys um, 
can take uh, some of my uh, ideas here at home. And uh, thank you so much for allowing me to, to be here today. Thank you so much, Claudio. Thank you for the reflections on the subject of no judging. It's a very difficult uh, habit that we all have and our relationship with this is very complex. There's a lot to, to think about here. Um, I have a few announcements before we get to our questions. Uh, first, there is a new weekly podcast-like series called psychology and spirituality a bridge to a better path based on the life and works of joanna de angelis there is a new episode every friday at 6 p.m eastern time the psychology and spirituality weekly talks based on the works of joanna de angelis will offer a safe place to confront compare correlate and expand spirituality concepts from a psychological lens bringing insights, actionable tips, and real role advice to help you and I lead a better life. Please subscribe to receive notifications of new episodes at the USSF YouTube channel. Second announcement. The U.S. Spiritist Federation has launched a new Spiritist app called Be My Hope available for download either on the App Store or on Google Play. This brand new app offers uplifting content in a collection of videos, daily messages, and audio materials. Download it now. And finally, on the screen, please note there is a QR code. If you want to help the United States Spiritist Federation promote more publications, and promote spiritism to everyone, please scan the QR code for your donation. Okay, we are now open for questions and comments from the audience. If you haven't posted yet, there is still time. Let's see what we have here. All right. Okay. From the United States Spiritist Federation. Do we judge others out of self-protection? If so, are we hardwired to judge? And is this a reason why it is a difficult to break this malicious habit? Yeah, absolutely, uh, Peter. We're definitely hardwired to judge and mm -hmm. self-protection uh, is a way uh, for us to, like that, that triggers us to, to, to create uh, more judging. And I, I would say uh, self-protection gets in the middle of a lot of things. Um, I had a boss that once told me this, and I, I never forgot, which was, if you don't pass along what you know to others, you are never able to progress in your career. And sometimes you see the opposite uh, on, on, the work, uh, on the workplace is really people trying to be super protective of themselves because they think like, oh, I'm, I'm the owner of this information as long as I, I'm the only one that knows that. Nobody, like nobody, I'm not going to be fired or I'm not going to be, uh, I can act the way I want because I, I solely contain. But what happens is, yeah, that might be true, but you're never going to be able to progress in your career. So uh, by teaching others, you really learn, like, first of all, you assess if what you know is really true. That's the only, that's the best way to learn is like teaching others, right? But also takes you out of your comfort zone. It forces you to be to be better and also makes you grow into something else. So you, you open yourself the opportunity to learn something new, right? So um, self-protection can be very harmful. It can, um, it, it's easier to act like self-protecting yourself, but uh, if you, you have to break that cycle, otherwise you're not gonna grow, so. Those are good points. It sounds like you were also touching on the, on the point that really, much of what we have we don't really own in the first place that yeah. correct correct okay. yeah sometimes we we uh we have this false feeling of ownership of an idea mm -hmm. and sometimes like you, you learn on spiritism that those ideas maybe maybe they were your own ideas but maybe there were inspirations that come 
from uh, other places, right? So don't even some of those ideas don't don't uh, don't feel empowered that they're or don't feel proud of them because sometimes like they might not be exactly your ideas. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you. Okay, next question. This is a comment from Kirsten DeSantos. Hi, Kirsten. I like to always remind myself about unconscious bias and to just try to always be alert and aware uh, to be open-minded when standing before anyone different than the norm. Hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a very uh, good tip there. Uh, you you have to watch your actions um, every uh, every time because um, you know sometimes it, it's good also to mix the type of people that you deal with because we tend to only be with the people that have similar ideas to our ideas and if you do that that puts you in a box so if you only want to have friends that have the same religion that you have or if you want to only have friends that uh, have the same sort of like political views that you have it's very likely same idea here you're not going to be able to progress if, you do, if you're not exposed to something different if you're not forcing yourself to to have a different perspective um you, you're going to be stuck right so uh opening yourself to different situation opening yourself to different pe people different cultures uh different foods you know uh is there a better way to learn about other cultures than um, uh, experiencing it through food? Maybe if there's a certain culture that you have that uh, bias, go ahead and try to eat their food because maybe that will they'll help you to change your mind, right? Like you, you mm -hmm. just feel more interested about uh, other different cultures. So and always watch for like that unconscious bias because uh, like uh, like I mentioned in the beginning on the very on the second slide of the presentation that prejudice sometimes comes from like generations, right? It's something that was passed down from previous generations. So you need to be the one that's going to break that cycle moving forward. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, keep that in mind. And just overcoming that habit of being ethnocentric in which we're anxious to teach, but reluctant to learn. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Next question. from the U.S. Spiritist Federation. How much do we judge people because they represent something within ourselves that we are reluctant to face? Hmm. Absolutely, uh, th that is something uh, I also highlighted uh, through the presentation there. We mm -hmm. tend to see on others, ourselves, either actions of things that we used to do in the past or things that we still do that bothers us so much. But the reality is when others do to us, we, we, we feel angry, we feel like uh, very uh, uh, frustrated, but then when we do it to others, we just ignore it, right? So mm -hmm. whenever that situation happens to you, just take that as an opportunity to, to make an analysis on yourself. So when, why am I feeling like that? Try to analyze your feelings, try to think about like what you're feeling at that very moment. That will help you to uh, really think differently. That's a very important point. We have to pay attention. Yes. Thank you. Okay, next question. Claudio, since we live in a time of polarization, is the habit of judging others more prevalent today than in the past? What do you think? Yeah, we certainly live in a time of polarization. And unfortunately, that that whole idea of being with people that think like you or just being on that box mm -hmm. uh it, it's much easier so uh i remember when i moved to the us i'm originally from brazil it was much easier for me to be with other brazilians because it was natural right it, okay. so but then i again I, I always think like if i if i'm in this box i'm not moving forward right mm -hmm. so the we, we 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 need to be open to to different people and different ideas uh if everyone in the world had the same religion the same uh ideas we would be stuck 
the 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 greatest tech revolutions come from like what we call disruptors right so what what is a disruptor is someone that takes something that nobody thought about before and makes something different out of it right mm -hmm. so if we're and we we usually like that on technology we like people that are disruptors but then we don't like people that think different than we think or that have like i said different religion different uh point of view uh a political point of view so it's good to to talk to people that are in a different uh situation that you are to 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 listen first of all listen uh what they say and 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 think about that but also to to be exposed to to different people to be, be exposed to different ideas well am i correct in thinking that with technology you really have to be open to abandoning something if it's not working and try something that's completely different which means you therefore have to be flexible in order to do that in the first place yeah flexibility uh is the key for for success if you're dealing uh, especially with technology mm -hmm. so um i work with semiconductors and i remember when i started with semiconductors mm -hmm. uh, the the most advanced nodes uh, that we had in in this technology was in the 20 30 nanometer space and now like i just read some news yesterday that intel just announced a 1.5 nanometer factory in germany so when you think about that like that that is a tiny little fraction of the size of what used to be and so uh, this is only on the field that i work on right, right. uh you you need to uh look into how you do things and einstein says if you if you do the same thing every day and expect a different result you're a fool right so mm -hmm. you, you gotta you gotta do it uh you gotta change the way you do things in order to to expect different results so right. um, so and that comes in technology that comes in all aspects of our lives right so if you're trying to lose weight and you keep eating the same stuff that you eat every day or mm -hmm. you're not exercising like you're not going to lose weight <laughs> so you have to right. break that habit right and those are all aspects of freeing ourselves of judgment in certain correct yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. okay i think we have time for one more question let's see what we have Okay, even if our observations are correct, is transcending our negative perceptions of others one of our greatest challenges? Can you elaborate on how we should react when we witness behavior in others that is not okay? Yeah, sure. Uh, it, it's always hard to, uh, when, when we see something that conflict with with ourselves and i always go back to my values right so sometimes it like if it's just something that i don't like mm -hmm. does that conflict with my own values and if it does you, you're not necessarily have to accept everything right uh, it's not about like accepting everything or accepting all the situations it's to be open mm -hmm. to uh different situations but uh, there are things that are bad, and we just have to live with the idea that sometimes there are people that are less evolved than we are. Than, than we are, or, or uh, we have to live. Uh, it's like when you uh, uh, Marcus Aurelius uh, says this. Uh, if if you uh, read about it, so mm -hmm. he says, if you trust an untrusty person, you should take that on you, and just realize that there are untrusty people out there, and you just face one of them. It doesn't mean like everyone is untrustworthy, but you just face someone that is untrustworthy. So keep that in mind. There might be some people that you should not trust, right? So, um, but that doesn't mean you should lock yourself into a situation and and because because that that's a, also what happens that and that's what leads us to be more defensive. So as you live your life, and uh, I I can tell that you know. The way I think today is very different than the way I used to think 20 years ago. So as you progress in your life and you get exposed to situations, you tend to become more defensive because you don't want to suffer what you have suffered in the past. Mm -hmm. But you have to accept that people are in different stages in their evolution uh, and just 
you know, sometimes you, you're going to stump into a bad situation. Yeah. It's tricky, isn't it? Because as we try to free ourselves of judgment, it does not mean that we should just turn a blind eye to everything as you were just saying. And yet um, we also have to give people a, a chance to, but that doesn't mean we need to get involved with everyone, especially if they're, behaving in ways that are better than we distance ourselves. Yeah, I mean, it, it's all about your values. So if there's mm -hmm. anything that conflicts mm -hmm. with your values, with your mm -hmm. beliefs, mm -hmm. uh, you, you always have to challenge that. You yes. know, and, uh, you, and you should speak up. If it is something, uh, you, you shouldn't be angry about it. You should be, uh, again, uh, going back to Marcus Aurelius, I've been reading a lot about him like, lately. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he says, you have to treat them with kindness and really explain why that conflicts with your values. And maybe that's uh, something that will help that person to not do that again. Right. And if they do it, it's on them. They're like uh, you did your part, you point out mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. And even uh, when it comes to judgment too, uh, it's important to highlight and the spiritism highlights this across the board is that when someone commits like, let's say a crime, right? Like, what the spiritism says is not for you to uh, let the person go away with it, right? It's really yeah. trying to understand what the person and, 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 but there will be consequences and those consequences will be there. So it's not telling you to let go of the consequences, but just be okay with the situation. But that person will need mm -hmm. to go through like whatever they have to go through, right? We have laws in the society to make sure we all live harmoniously and mm -hmm. if someone is breaking that law they have to go through the process and uh you know um they, they will need to suffer through that so it's it's going to be part of like that individual evolution right absolutely well these are all great points okay well thank you claudio thank you for sharing your knowledge and expertise with us and thank you everyone who has watched today's spiritism uh, talk series, and thank you for those who've been following us every week. Next Saturday, we will have Edward Christie talking about Blaise Pascal, the heart's search for God. That should be a fascinating subject. I look forward to it. Okay, uh, Claudio, do you mind doing a final prayer for us? Yeah, absolutely, Peter. Thank you. Let's let's close our eyes and thank god for the opportunity to be here as human beings thank for the opportunity to live where we live for the house that we have uh for the food that we have in our tables for the friends that surround us and, and help us to move forward in our progress let's keep in mind not to judge others uh to really analyze the situation and and think about what the other person is going through before we make a judgment. And we ask God to be with us every day, giving us strength and knowledge to go through those situations graciously. And so be it. So be it. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week.